Hey guys, Carl Walkner here. So we're checking out the user interface on the Shear and Looper X. The screen is massive. We're gonna go into the main menu and we're basically just gonna go through. Now there's two main views that you'll use mostly while performing. That's the track view, which is this. Let me just cue a little loop that I set up earlier. As you can see, you got track one, two, three, and four, all showing their various volume levels, right? When you go back, you can also view it in the WAV file format. This is my personal favorite when I'm performing. I can get the timing a little better and I can really see if I've got various loop lengths depending on which mode I'm in. Moving back to the main menu, we can access the mixer. Now this is if you want to pan tracks one, two, three, and four, and you can actually see the volume levels of each of the tracks. So I can select each of the tracks, bring the volume up and down via the touch screen or via the infinity knob. Moving right on to the effects, now I've set up three different effects here, which you can toggle on and off with the top layer. Um, let me show you what's available. So you've got Ed's Rack, you've got various effects for vocal, guitar, lo-fi, et cetera. Um, if you select these, you can also manipulate any of the actual effects within them. So you can change the pitch, the EQ, basically anything you like. You have a guitar tuner. This thing is incredible, but it also acts just like a tuner. So let's keep going. You have the ability to save and store loops on here if you have particular parts for songs or particular settings that you'd like to retain, and you can access them via the loop manager. Storage shows that I've used almost nothing, five gig available, and you can also add storage via the SD card via USB. Now this has a backing track feature, which is extremely helpful, especially for those people who don't necessarily want to loop live and create these loops live. You can import WAV files and you can use this to accompany your performance. So this doesn't have to be a live loop station. This is just a loop station for any performer. You can import the WAV files via the SD card and just have a fantastic time doing that. All right, bottom row, we've got the loop settings. You can set your tempo, time signature, click, any count ins, etc. The looper mode, you have five, multi, sync, song, band, and free. We'll get into that in another video, but it's extremely versatile in the style of live looping that you want. You can select your the, the measure and length of your track. You can also quantize, which kind of helps with little imperfections in timing. Um, you can basically go through and select whether it's a one shot or whether the loop fades off, etc. depending on which button you press. Um, you can sync a few settings and you can also customize this foot pedal. Global settings, this is, uh, I guess, the pedal logic. So whether you want specific pedals to do specific tasks in a specific way. For example, um, you can hit record, play, and overdub or record, overdub, and play. Now, audio settings allow phantom power on any of the inputs, ground lifts, and tuner outputs specifically to the phones or to any of the specific outputs. USB audio, bam. MIDI settings and info, which is the firmware of the pedal. Now, audio routing. This is easily my favorite and most rabbit holeable feature on this. You can really customize. <laughs> I sounded, I sounded kind of evil just then, but you really can. You can really customize the inputs and outputs of this pedal and for what each track specifically does. This is going to be an entire separate video on its own, but just so you know, this is the business part of it. <clears throat> All right. Um, transfer, this is if you have multiple units and you want to save certain scenes. Perfect. And making sure the firmware is updated. There you have it, JDs and Lentleman. You have the user interface of the Sheeran Looper X. That thing is super deep in terms of ones and zeros. Check it out.